please give a big hand to Nathan Gill, MEP. Thank you very much. He forgot to mention I also collect titles. Um, I'm looking for MP as well, if possible. <laughs> now, there's an old Chinese saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for life. Much of the foreign aid budget is issued on the basis of teaching a man to fish or, as they call it, development aid. You would think on the face of it that this was wise. However, when you look closely at the projects that they are funding, it is not so much teaching a man to fish as teaching them to dance, as we shall see later. <laughs> if someone is starving, sick with malaria, or just had their home swept away by a tsunami, they may not be in the right state of mind to be taught lessons in so-called Western values of governance or better practice. UKIP's foreign aid policy is very simple. We will ensure that aid is concentrated on life-saving programs. <laughs> Inoculation, clean water and sanitation, an emergency disaster relief. In the Bible, Cain asked the question of God, am I my brother's keeper? Well, we live in a civilized country where during the last few decades, we have collectively looked after each other through policies like the NHS, education and social housing, to name just a few. The British feel that we are our brother's keeper. But for some reason, the establishment parties seem to think that we can extend this to the entire world. Here in Britain, libraries are closing. Hundreds of thousands depend on food banks and over 40,000 of our elderly have died this winter alone due to the cold weather. Now bear in mind that we've had a very mild winter this year, so the figure could have been a lot higher, couldn't it? Yet the British government chooses to spend our money overseas, which should be used to help our own people in a time of crisis. They also feel that a policy and politics of austerity should be endured by us, the taxpayer, while increasing the foreign aid budget to astronomical levels. Now, unfortunately, because of the bankers' disaster and, and the 2008 um, situation that saw huge bailouts to the banks, large numbers no longer seem to mean anything to anybody anymore. But let me just put it this way. The UK gives £11.4 billion every year in foreign aid. Now, that's a staggering £32 million each and every day, or £190 for each and every one of you individually here and in Britain. I'm a family of seven. That's £1,330 of my taxes going in foreign aid. It's interesting that whilst British people starve and freeze and public services are cut, our government has declared that foreign aid is a sacred cow. The 0.7% of gross national income, or GNI, which is set aside for foreign aid, has been declared off limits for any cuts. What's more, they've even proposed to enshrine this in law. Not only are we paying directly for foreign aid via the Department for International Development, please remember that the EU is the world's largest donor when it comes to foreign aid. We, of course, know that there is no such thing as EU money. 16% of every, of every euro that the EU spends comes from the British taxpayer. The EU routinely uses foreign aid to glorify itself, 
by favor with corrupt leaders and establish leverages so that it can bully countries. The EU is the world's biggest donor with a monstrous 960 billion euro budget for the 2014-2020 funding period. Do we really want to spend almost 1 trillion euros of taxpayers' money on foreign aid? When some EU countries have 50% youth unemployment, like Greece, and countries like Greece have been brought to its knees through austerity. The youth from Portugal, Spain, Greece and Ireland are being forced to leave their homelands just to find work. The UK's foreign aid budget could instead pay for the building of 33 new hospitals or two Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers, but not with the aeroplanes on them. It could also have paid for the entire London Olympics with two billion pounds left over. Or alternatively, as we are borrowing the money in the first place, we could just not borrow the money and stop putting our grandchildren into deeper debt. The former director of the CBI, Digby Jones, said, we're closing libraries and yet at the same time we're giving money to China to buy trees because they pollute the environment. We're giving 240 million quid to India and they've got a Formula One Grand Prix and a space program. As Digby Jones stated, we need to wake up and smell the coffee. Yes, to help with disaster relief because Britain's great at doing that. I believe that it's time that we are honest and that we face the facts. Borrowing money that we do not have to fund projects that do not work is sheer folly. For, former World Bank insider and author Steve Berkman claims that not one of the more than 100 projects on which he worked was free of corruption. So where does our 1.4 billion contribution to the EU aid program go? Much of the money is going to corrupt regimes with dubious human rights records. And Turkey, for instance, receives 500 million pounds a year. In Burkina Faso, where half the population earns less than 70 pence a day, the EU paid Belgian instructors to teach the people how to dance through the, through the I Dance, Therefore I Am project. <laughs> and the organizers said, and we shouldn't laugh about this really, but they did say that if music moves, Africa will also move. The EU has given 8.8 .8 million to an immigration advisory center in Mali, which tells people how to find jobs in Europe. The center has found work for six people in three years. We should clap at that. Or should we? I'm not sure. Out of a population of 15.3 million people, that same money could have been used to, to buy 1.75 million mosquito nets. Britain has contributed, now this is going to get you really happy, 7 million pounds to a 50 million EU aid program to Argentina, our well-known friends and allies. <laughs> this is the same Argentina which makes repeated threats against our Falkland Islands. Yeah. And has just bought 20 fighter jets from China. Now it's shocking that charity, which used to be thought of as an activity that should be done for no personal award, has become a way to get rich. Respected journalist Linda Pullman 
condemns the relative luxury in which aid workers often live in the developing world. She also criticizes the way that aid organizations draw local staff away from vital industries by paying way above the domestic rates. In the financial year, 2011 to 12, the Department for International Development awarded 135 contracts to just 58 contractors, amounting to 489 million pounds. In September 2012, a Sunday Times investigation revealed that many of the contractors received most of their income from the Department for International Development, and then huge sums to their directors. William Morrison, managing director of the Adam Smith International, earned 200,000 pound in 2010. I'm in the wrong business, aren't I? And collected dividends worth over one million from its parent company, Amphion Group, which was wholly owned by him and three other fellow directors. Poverty barons are making a fortune from the aid budget funded by the British taxpayer. Which is even more worrying is that several of these consultants are former Department for International Development officials. Why are we surprised? We're not, are we? Oxfam and Save the Children draw almost half of their income from public funds. Some senior figures of these organizations can be qualified as real charity fat cats. The chief executive of Save the Children earned 163,000 in 2012. He also claimed 3,100 pound in expenses for sandwiches and subsistence. The number of executives receiving six-figure salaries at Britain's 14 leading foreign aid charities has risen by nearly 60%. The number of staff on salaries of more than 60,000 has jumped by 16%. Now it's important to point out here that the British public are the most generous in the world. We give over nine billion pounds a year ourselves without having to be taxed or forced to, to charities. I say this to the charities of Britain. If your charitable cause is just, the people of Britain will support it. But it is, it is immoral to tax men and women, many of whom are reliant on food banks to get by in order for politicians to then give this taxation to a charity, no matter how just the cause may seem. If your charity cannot survive without handouts from the taxpayer, then change your business model. Merge with another charity, or maybe stop paying your executives so much money. Local councils use taxpayers' money to support charities. Our government borrows money to support charities, and the EU uses our taxes to support charities. Does anyone else here see a problem with this? I have produced a booklet. There's many of them at the back of the hall there, and I think they've been on the chairs as well. Take a look at it. There's some amazing information in here. Read it and learn it and use it when you're campaigning. They're available free of charge. If you want any more, come speak to us at the back. In here, I explain very clearly eight reasons why we must, why we should, and why we need to reduce foreign aid. Number one, it costs a fortune. Number two, we actually can't afford it. Number three, corruption eats up a large part of it. Number four, it is often spent on senseless projects. Five, it fills the pockets of despots and human rights abusers. Six, it goes to terrorists and warmongers. Seven, it goes to countries which don't need it. And eight, foreign aid has become a fat cat industry. 
Put simply, the world's poorest countries are capable of standing on their own two feet and financing their own services. For this, an efficient tax system is crucial and should also be on the list of priorities of developing nations. The International Development Committee of the House of Commons has observed that an effective tax administration is crucial for a country's economic, social and political development. Tax responsibility helps to make rogue states more accountable to their people. Every developing country has some form of formal property system, but most of its citizens don't have access to it. The law protects the elites. Peruvian economist Hernando de Soto argues that poor developing nations will not prosper until they have established a formal system of property rights. Removing barriers of trade is the best way of tackling poverty. At present, political rulers who stifle their nation's economic progress are rewarded with foreign aid. In fact, many of the world's worst dictators are large aid recipients. Aid breaks accountability between individual citizens and rulers, allowing for further corrupt behavior which undermines development. There is and always will be a need for emergency aid, such as disaster relief. There should be well this should be well funded and organized. The only way to restore dignity and provide a real living to the world's poorest people is by free access to British, European and US markets. Free trade, not aid. It's immoral to take taxes from people who themselves need to use food banks to give money to foreign countries, especially since the people of Britain already give 9 billion through private charity donations. Worse still, the aid industry is itself hindering progress in these countries. Massive aid programs send a signal to dictators and unscru unscrupulous rulers that they don't need to give tax and property rights to the poorest in the land or to make their people prosperous with structures that would bring economic development. UKIP will reduce the aid budget to 0.19% of GNI, which is the same level as the USA. That amounts to a reduction That amounts to a reduction of nine billion pounds a year and means that we will still give four times the foreign aid as Italy and Spain combined. We believe in charity and we believe that as a first world country, we have a duty to help those who are less fortunate than, them, than ourselves. We will use aid to save lives through inoculation programs, clean water, sanitation programs, and emergency disaster relief. But we do not believe that the government has a right to donate your taxes to charities, some of which you may never choose to support. And the priority of every government is to spend our taxes on helping our own people first. Charity does, be, does begin at home, and UKIP will ensure that this is the case. It's time for change. Free and fair trade, not aid. Thank you.